Hey y'all, I'm Olivia, welcome to AV Club, and today we're going to talk about a horror book to movie review comparison of We Need to Do Something by Max Booth III. This was my first book by this author and what a treat. We Need to Do Something is a short novel, a novella. We Need to Do Something follows a young teenage girl in high school who is hunkering down in her bathroom with her family as a storm flies overhead, that there is a tornado warning out. So they have come to the interior of the bathroom to to wait out the storm. There's a sense of claustrophobia to the novel. Obviously, they're all trapped in this bathroom and I felt, I felt it. <laughs> so where I grew up was a more tornado zone and now I live in a hurricane zone. So I'm very familiar with the, you know, going to the interior of your house and um, now it's just me, but whenever I was with my family, our only bathroom that didn't have windows was a half bathroom that was downstairs and it was a tight fit whenever I was a child. I don't think there's a possibility of us fitting as adults. Um, so that's kind of the sense that I was going off of is just like, maybe not that small, but a pretty modest sized bathroom that this family is trapped in and there is obvious tension between the family members even prior to the the beginning of this novel. There is tension between the mom and the dad um, for marital reasons. Um, yeah, this is a novella so I'm going to keep it as brief as possible just giving you the the mood of it um and it is very moody the you know the the girl and her dad have kind of an estranged relationship she's a little bit closer to her mom her little brother is there and he they're like you know just how siblings are that they pick at each other and then that tension ramps up as they like figure out we're gonna have to pee in front of each other we're gonna have to poop in front of each other. We're gonna have to shower in front of each other. Um, so they're already just stressed out. You get stressed out during storms. Um, but there's this other layer to this that there's the sense that something is not quite right, that the girl keeps saying, you know, I think that there's something wrong with this storm. Um, and then as the novel progresses that it becomes increasingly weird that the the sense of weirdness of what's going on with the storm um, is both psychically making her in a worse headspace as well as things that start to happen in the bathroom, um, things that they perceive happening outside. Uh, a big part of this story is the relationship that this girl had um, with another girl at her school, that they were in a romantic relationship and that it wasn't being um, perceived well by their classmates. And so that this is a, a significant part of her her stress, that it's it's like that these like psychic things and these real life stresses are blending and it turns into this like psychedelic fever dream of a story where time is overlaid on each other um not that this is a time travel story like i'm not spoiling anything but just like how the story is being told is that you don't have a really great grasp of like what's going on and the character that you're following doesn't have a really great grasp of what's going on that she can't tell if stuff is happening now or in the past or if they're the same thing or if stuff is really there that what's going on outside is that real can the family perceive it there is some very upsetting 
imagery. <laughs> there is some very upsetting imagery from both a speculative perspective as well as like the very upsetting real world grounded stuff that was happening um, with this girl and her girlfriend and um, being harassed for for their relationship. Um, there's just so many great things that I would love to discuss, but I think that you would benefit from being surprised by them. So I I think that both the world that the story creates and the the characters in such a short time were given a lot of a lot of depth and that the writing style was truly truly captivating that it was very upsetting and what can I say but a fever dream because like that's what it feels like it's just like pulsing horror like of every genre is going on in here um there is definitely some for both the book and the movie some like trigger warnings as far as like self-harm um alcoholism that there's some very upsetting events that go on associated with that um but there is, yeah, so there's like just a almost like dystopian, apocalyptic, witchy, but also grounded horror vibes to this in you, I feel like it just grabs you and just like not let go because it's like you feel like the inklings that something is not right and the character feels the inklings that something is not right in the beginning and then it just gets it just waves in and out like letting you like go back to this like grounded place for a second and be like okay I think you know she was perceiving that or you know the story waves back and forth between these like family relationships and this very upsetting storm that is going on. Um, you feel that lack of control. You feel that lack of relief from just the onslaught of psychic damage that is occurring in the story. I found it um, un... I was unable to to stop it like I needed to to ride it out that it it felt like a storm in that way that it's just like you know whenever we prepare for hurricanes here it's like you know in days in advance something's not right something is coming and then the something does come and then you just have to ride it out there's literally nothing you can do other than just like ride it out and wait through it so I think that it both you know, captures this like horror story that's going on, but also like the actual horror of living through a storm very well. If that's not an experience that you've had, you know, count yourself lucky. But, um, but that was, I, I gave it four out of five stars on, you know, a general, I gave it four stars, but like, this is a definite recommend because I think it will tick a lot of different boxes that it's definitely like a genre bender and much to interpret throughout the story. It's definitely not a straightforward story. So if you're someone who likes to have all the answers, then maybe this isn't the one for you. But if you like something that just feels weird and and upsets you <laughs> because you're not going to get any of the answers, then mm -hmm, try this one out. The movie, I just watched the movie this week and if I had not known that this book already had a movie adaptation and had planned to read and watch this back to back, I would have like been very skeptical to hear that there was a movie adaptation of it because it's so weird and because the of the, the like time shifts where stuff is you're not sure like if it's happening now in the past like 
it feels like so chaotic when you're reading it in a way that I feel like the written word has a easier, not an easier time of doing, but um, a more convincing way of doing sometimes than visual media would have been very surprised. So I was not sure what to expect whenever I was like actually coming into this movie. And the few reviews that I did look at um, from people that I follow on Letterboxd didn't seem to like have read the book. You know, they were new to the movie and that's absolutely fine. Um, but where to start with the movie? I did like it. I did like it. I maybe I would have liked it more if I hadn't read the book first just because the book was so successful for me and because I find that it was a very they had a hard job to figure out how to adapt this um and it's definitely very interesting it is interesting I think that the first thing that I noticed was like whenever they start in the bathroom at the beginning it's like a very expansive bathroom and it's like you know I think I know that there's some constraints with filmmaking that like they would have had to not have like a real just like bathroom set <laughs> and had to like have different area like mini sets to have like a more modestly sized bathroom um but it felt very expansive and in, in a way that was like not I've you know it was just a very large bathroom so like it lost that kind of immediate sense of claustrophobia and especially like whenever you just like feel like all of these characters being pushed together in the book and then you see them like all spread out in the in the movie like that's you know you just lose a little bit of the sense of claustrophobia but um you know I understand that there are constraints I don't think that this was like the highest ever budget film um not that there wasn't great stuff you know that they didn't have a budget because there was some really impressive visuals <laughs> in the in the movie um you you think that they have a hard job adapting it too just because that there is so many questions about like is this really happening and then in the movie they're showing you it happening um whereas like she questions her own self in the in the book a little bit more um the cast incredible um I loved that the mom was like the girl from Hocus Pocus like I think that that heritage like not that she wasn't good as you know a mom actor but having that like I felt like had a little bit of um interesting overlay onto the story especially because there were like some like witchy elements to have like that heritage and like maybe what it had to say about being a teenage girl did it I mean that's all up to interpretation this movie is I mean the, the whole story the the book and the movie are not trying to like send you home with a message it's very open to interpretation what is going on um so I thought that was interesting I loved that they made the couple like a um princess bubblegum marceline type of aesthetic it worked um I will say that the girl looked great the whole film despite being trapped in this horrific situation with her whole family um, for days. You know, her hair looked great, her makeup looked great. Um, so props to you, girl, you gotta serve. We're living, you know, we're living in unprecedented times, but you gotta serve. So that was, it's a film. I, you know, I don't need everything to be like very gritty and realistic. I like being served um, a visual and this movie did that. There were definitely some great body horror scenes with, um, with the father especially. There's just, it's so hard to talk about, you know, the visuals that I really loved um, without spoiling anything. I will say there was a great needle drop of uh putting on the ritz by taco there was a great cameo by ozzy osbourne you know that's interesting um 
how would I have adapted this film to give it, you know, the mood that I felt like the book captured? I think that it would have benefited from a animated interpretation, like maybe something along the lines of a scanner darkly, something that allows you to feel a little bit upset just by the the way that things blend or like waking life, something like that, that like you don't, you feel unsettled in time watching it and stuff can like meld in a way that sometimes it's, you know, that's a little bit more convincing with animation or something that's a little bit more dreamy in its visuals like After Blue, Dirty Paradise, um, that also that I think would have would have worked well like that and like it does get to there at some points but I almost want it to be the whole time because the book the book didn't leave you like didn't let you stay grounded for so long whereas like the movie did and then like weird stuff would kind of happen um I think too is like sometimes weird stuff would happen in the movie and then it would go back to these like long naturalistic shots of like the the faces the hands of the family and it lets you go back to this like more grounded arena whereas like the book was just like this like swirling storm the whole time and sometimes like part of the storm was like this like interpersonal tension between the family members but it wasn't it never lost like the sense of weirdness like it didn't let you forget that something weird had just happened in the way that the movie did, that it was a little bit more gritty. The movie too. The movie too, I would recommend watching. Would I recommend, I would recommend reading the book first, honestly. Um, and then the movie, it's good. If you're not a reader, then definitely watch the movie. I don't think that you will hate it. I think that, again, people who want to know the answers and um, need a reason for everything are going to be not, not feeling fulfilled at the end of this. But if you like weird things, then it's good. Um, if you, <laughs> it's definitely one of those movies where people are going to Google at the end, like, what would, what did the ending of we need to do something mean? Um, I don't think you're going to find anything rewarding from that google search so um that's about all i really wanted to talk about with those two i think that i would i would love to talk about it with other people and their interpretations of it it's definitely upsetting relentless chaotic um so if any of those sound good to you then check them out um but definitely something that you can you know a added plus for me is that it's a short read and a, like a you know appropriately <laughs> timed film um I didn't feel like it even though like it did have those moments of like slowing down in the movie I don't think that it lost its sense of overall pacing um but yeah that's all I wanted to talk about with that for today um but if you've seen it or read it let me know um, if you have any other book to movie comparisons that you would like to hear, let me know. But until then, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye!